I'm Robert Adams, and this week on Final Boss is our review extravaganza. First, we review South Park The Stick of Truth, then Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes, and Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls. And we have our first ever sudden death battle where two people compete in Super Smash Bros. Brawl to face Sam. Get ready, boss incoming. What is Final Boss? Final Boss is engineered by gamers for gamers. We handcraft videos that contain previews, reviews, let's play, gaming news, gaming discussion, brands from our own, Robert Adams, and much more gaming content to quench your thirst for quality gaming related programming. It's time for Final Boss. I'm Robert Adams, and this is your gaming news. First up, if you don't have a next gen system, but you love Doom, I have some bad news for you. To get the new Doom beta, you must have two things, Wolfenstein the New Order, and a next gen system. Bethesda went on to say that this correlates, so if you buy an Xbox 360 or an Xbox One version, you get the Xbox One beta, but if you buy a PS3 or PS4 version, you get the PS4 beta. So basically what you're telling me is if I buy this for last gen systems, you're going to have to wave a golden ticket into my face until I spend four or five hundred dollars? Wrong move. Also, a five year old boy has learned how to bypass Xbox Live security. He figured this out by, after failing to get his father's password right, typing the spacebar in multiple times until it filled up the entire screen and he gained access. Microsoft has since patchworked this, but as a bonus, they gave the kid something nice. His team has added to a list of researchers in security, $50, four games, and a year-long subscription to Xbox Live. Now, if only they could give him his own account. I'm Robert Adams, and this has been your Gaming News. Warning. The segment you are about to watch contains content that some may deem inappropriate. Any actions, stereotypes, or otherwise crude or unnecessary remarks shown in the following footage or audio are not condoned in any way by Curry Hearts and Final Boss or Morehead State University. Also, it's South Park, so, uh, you know. Have you ever wondered how Troy Parker and Matt Stone could get around the rules of television? With South Park, the stick of truth. This long anticipated game was finally delivered to us after years of anticipation. So after the long wait, did Trey Parker and Matt Stone finally make a South Park game that is worth something? Was the hype just that? Here's my review. South Park, the stick of truth is a turn-based RPG which holds nothing back. Like I implied, this is the way that Trey Parker and Matt Stone found the way around the laws of television. And if you like South Park the show, on a pure comedy basis, you will love this game. It is very South Park, and if I wasn't playing a game, I could very easily see this game being as a several episode arc on the show and it fit in just fine. So, it's a South Park game. That leads to the question, is it funny? As a South Park fan, I thought it was hilarious. A lot of the long-running jokes from South Park are present in the game and it made me laugh more than I could have ever hoped for. They did not miss the trigger at all on the writing aspect of the game. Many laughs will be had more than enough times throughout the game and if nothing else you will find this game hilarious if you're in the South Park style of humor. But what about the gameplay? You can't have a game without gameplay. The writing is good but how does the game actually play? As I said, it's a turn-based RPG and take what you will from that. I've played many RPGs in my life, several of which were turn-based, so the concept is not foreign to me and I'm okay with it. If you don't like turn-based RPGs though, you might want to skip out on this one. It's very in the style of a turn-based RPG and it doesn't stray from that to really accommodate others besides its writing. The game knows what it is though and it pokes fun at itself for being a turn-based RPG while still being thoroughly enjoyable. This wasn't a half-done game that was wrapped into a South Park shell so people would buy it. No, you could take this game out of its wrapper and still have it be a fun turn-based RPG. There are status effects, perks, upgrades, companions, and more 
that you will bring with you on your journey through the South Park universe as you play through the game. The combat is very Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door-ish for anyone who has played that game. Well-timed button presses will land you more powerful attacks, blocks, returned attacks, and more. As a lover of the Thousand Year Door, the combat satisfied me greatly, and I was glad to see another game that finally engaged me in turn base as the Thousand Year Door did. So, bravo to South Park and Obsidian Games for that. There are many glitches in the game, though. Constantly, I would see my character flicker in and out on the PC version of the game, and it would distract me a lot when it would happen, and it would break the immersion of the game I would have and make me not want to play anymore, honestly. It wouldn't have been such a big deal if it didn't happen consistently like it did. Like I've said in the past, though, maybe I'm just bad at the ga bad at games now, but the difficulty is no joke. It isn't a walk in the, for lack of a better term, park, and gave me an actual challenge. It could leave me very frustrated as I would die often, but I applaud them for not making a pushover of a game just to say they made a South Park game. They made an actual fun, challenging game. All in all though, this game was an awesome surprise and the hype was absolutely right. I give South Park the Stick of Truth an 8 out of 10. For Final Boss, I'm Curry Hartson. In this area, I believe we are dealing with Man Bear Pig! Yes, THE Man Bear Pig! Hi, welcome back to Final Boss. Uh, I'm here with uh, Jessica McGuire who is actually a member of our crew here on the show, um, but has just recently uh, done some work for one of our classes about um, women and video gaming. Uh, before we get into that, though, I, I just want to ask you what, do you, what do you like to play? Like, what's your interest in video games? Well, honestly, I like mostly old school games. Mm -hmm. uh, Super Nintendo is my favorite system. I play Super Mario World all the time. And maybe Maniac Mansion for mm -hmm. original Nintendo. Mm -hmm. I remember you were telling me about that earlier. So you, do you, you don't play a lot of recent games? Um, here and there. I play Kingdom Hearts. I've played the Alice series, Batman. Mm -hmm. Love the Batman series. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so what, what, uh, what is your paper about exactly? Like what was the, what was the, the, uh, the main argument you were trying to present? Well... It was to analyze an argument, uh -huh. and what I found was Anita Sarkeesian. Now, she started out on Kickstarter asking uh -huh. for about $6,000, mm -hmm. and she actually ended up getting 158000 with about 6,000 backers. That's a lot of money. Yeah, so she researched sexism in video games. And what did she find? Well, she found that it was pretty abundant. Uh -huh. But what was more interesting to me as a female uh -huh. was that usually when I think about sexism, I think about, of course, scantily clad females. Uh -huh. And that, that's pretty much the only thing I was thinking at the time. Mm -hmm. But she actually used a lot of information about tropes, mm -hmm. um, like the damsel in distress. Like, mm -hmm. of course, mm -hmm. Princess Peach being the most <laughs> famous one, always getting captured. Poor, poor Peach. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think she's ever lasted a minute and a half of a <laughs> no, Mario game. Save definitely me. not. I know. I understand what you're saying. So, what did what what did you think about about her research? Well, I thought it was very very well researched. She had a lot of information, mm -hmm. very spot on. I agreed that a lot of it is sexist. I don't personally have a problem as a female. So you don't really take a lot of offense. No, I don't. Like, um, I understand that when guys play it, they don't necessarily think of women. As that right, way. Right. Like like uh, like while I'm sitting there, I'm just like, great. I'm going to rescue the princess. I'm not like. <laughs> I'm not taking some kind of weird uh, patriarchal view of it or anything. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm literally just trying, oh, God, we got to get the princess back. Like, yeah, I understand she oh. reads into a lot of it, but I do think like the game developers do kind of unconsciously use the same kind of formula. Uh -huh. That is sexist. Uh, as opposed to like games like Knights of the Old Republic, where you have uh, Bast and Exactly, Lashon, exactly, who, yeah. Who, who is actually responsible, you know, she, she beat you up. Yeah. And drug you off. Yeah, there, there and are that's, that's there a, are a lot different like that, there. Yeah. So, um, what did what did what kind of uh, finding did you arrive at? Like, what uh, where did where did you where did you I, we know where you started. Where did you end up at? 
Well, I mean, I did a lot of research after that, like mm -hmm. after I watched the whole thing, because I think it was about an hour altogether. And this is a video series. Yeah, uh, and it was actually really fascinating. So I looked up, you know, other videos of people mm -hmm. with like more examples, and it was just, it's really interesting to talk about with other people now, mm -hmm. because I guess I just had more knowledge going into it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you're still going to be playing video games? Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll be playing Tomb Raider. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll still play. Okay. Well, uh, that's all the time we've got for uh, this segment. I'd like to thank Jessica for coming out thank from behind the having. camera <laughs> and uh, and sitting on the couch with me and having, uh, talking about her paper. Because I've, I've been that's a topic that's been interesting to me uh, for a long time. We'll be right back here on Final Boss, Channel 85, MSU TV. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jared Williamson. I'm a freshman here at Moorhead State um, in Army ROTC, and uh, I'm a big gamer. So when John told me I would be uh, one of the first to play on Sudden Death, I jumped at the chance. Um, my opponent, I don't think he's, uh, he's ready for my level of competition, so I'm probably gonna own this. Uh, I'm not really worried at all. It's gonna be pretty easy. Uh, I think it'll be Hello, my name is Tristan Schuler. I'm a freshman here, and I go in, I'm in the Army ROTC program. When John told me I had the chance to participate in Sudden Death, I decided to take the chance. And even though I've never played this game before, uh, Super Smash Bros. So whatever I point to on the whatever character I point to on the screen is going to be the character I play as. So let's see. Oh, guess I'm playing as Fox. So, Jared, prepare to go down. Let's go. Uh, we just picked. Oh, this is gonna be good. All right, as oh, you we can got see, we have Lincoln Fox. Oh my God! We have Williamson playing as Link, and we have Schuler playing as Fox. Um, as you can see, Schuler is the most inexperienced yeah, of the two. Fell off the stage right off the stage. That's that's a Robert move. Oh, 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 oh ooh, watch out! We almost bouncer. lost Link over there. Oh, oh, oh hey, he's, he's got his blaster. There you go. There you go. Juggling. That's what Fox does. Juggling. Get that assist drill. Oh, no, no. Oh, oh no. Shula. Oh, no. Come Shula, on. Shula, you disappoint me. He did it again. <laughs> wow. He nearly did it again. Shula already too off. But the sad thing is, though, Williamson is in the at 30 knows, damage. I don't think he knows about his recovery. He does. Well, he does, but he just hasn't used it. He has to be very careful. Fox has actually got the strongest recovery. Yes. Oh, 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 does he know how to use it? Does he know how to use it? Does he know how to use it? Oh, hold me. Oh, no, oh, oh, man. Oh, this is sure to be a knockout. This is gonna bring, this is gonna bring Schuler right back into the fight. Hopefully, if Schuler doesn't knock himself out, which I do see happening. I don't, I don't have faith in Schuler. I don't know, he's, he's got that Landmaster, that's kinda, Oh, not anymore. 42, 42. Oh, man, yeah, here we go. He's kind of at a high percentage, too. I don't I don't know. There you go. He's using Fox's general combos. Oh, oh, there, there you go. Oh, no, he fell off. Uh, oh, use up B to recover. Come on, man. Up oh, B to recover. Oh. He's getting in the face. Oh, no. We got a lot of, we got a lot of food they need to heat, heat up. Grab that maximum command. Don't get hit. Oh. We're, we're a little over halfway into the fight. Right now, we're hanging four to one. She was barely hanging on in the first round. This is this is a sad display. Uh, I don't know. He's actually doing pretty well for somebody that you know I is new to the game. Well, I mean, at least he grabbed that super spicy curry. Yeah, he definitely definitely used that to his advantage against uh, against Williamson. Uh, that's been Shula's strong suit. So he's, he's got a lot of the items off of Williamson. He's trying to fight him straight up with smash moves. Oh, 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 avoid him. Avoid him. Oh, Just, oh, 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 minute 30 to go, minute 30 to go. He's still in this. Link's actually at a higher percent right now, but looks like the Pokeball's probably going to be too low. Oh, no. Avoid that. Oh, he, he, got, he got the, oh, he, he's still hanging on there. An even percentage. Uh, this is oh, anybody's game. Oh, nope, that's the game. 
two minutes and 45 seconds in the first round. Do you, do you yeah. feel good? You Rooms, beat somebody who's never played a game shoot. before. Oh, oh, you can't even pull that. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. He fell off let's, like uh, three let's go times. To them for their, uh, let's go to them for their, uh, their reaction. Okay. You can't, even, you can't even talk smack about that. You fell off three times. So, like I thought, it wasn't that much of a, of a challenge. He only got me because he got his final smash. Well, you see, I feel like he took advantage of me. I feel like I have been back. I mean, it's just, I mean, a baby is defenseless against a grown man. So what am I going to do is never play this game before against a guy who's, I guess, mastered it. Oh, mastered it? You fell off the map at least three times. No, just twice. Twice? Okay, still. I didn't just... even know, I thought I was the color red. It's just because you suck. I've always been a big fan of Metal Gear Solid games, from 1 to 4, but playing Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes left a bitter taste in my mouth. The main point of the game is to rescue or confirm the deaths of two friends, Chico and Paws from Peace Walker. First thing that I find wrong with this game is the time. On a casual playthrough getting back in touch with the mechanics and such, in which I died four times. The story clocked in at about 2 hours. If I had tried to speedrun it, however, I could have beat it in about 30 minutes. Next is weapon selection. Unlike previous Metal Gear games which gave you a plethora of weapons to choose from and many items to aid you, you are now limited to carrying only 4 pieces of equipment at a time. Two guns, a small sidearm and a normal arm, one grenade type, and one special type like claymores. Finally, you need Peace Walker to understand the emotional connection Big Boss has to these people. I found some hard difficulties understanding what these people meant to him at all. But Ground Zeroes has some shining points. First is the use of stealth. Rather than using some high-tech stealth suit, Big Boss relies on silence, the shadows, and tall grass to hide his presence from enemies. Plus, even if an enemy spots Big Boss, he has a brief moment to lock onto them and take them out before they inform others, making you feel like a true master soldier. The graphics have been immensely wrapped up, even on the Xbox 360, always make you feel like you're there, or that it seems like a movie. Also, the game has realism and options. A good example is shining a flashlight in an enemy's eyes to blind them briefly, or when a soldier is held up, you can question him, knock him out, or straight up kill him. Finally, there are some slight changes. First is the classic alert system no longer shows how long soldiers are looking for you, instead forcing you to rely on enemy movement and chat. You can now pick up enemy weapons and use them whenever you feel appropriate. And finally, the game is open world. This is easy due to the fact that the player can now drive vehicles. For those looking for a bonus, players are enticed to find collectible XOF patches for extra content, such as spec ops or gear. While this seems to be a normal Metal Gear Solid game, it's far too short to enjoy over a long period of time, and it's actually gone a few steps back in terms of playability. We here at Final Boss give this a 6 out of 10 POWs free. Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls is the latest expansion to Blizzard's best-selling Diablo franchise. The expansion, which picks up after the defeat of Diablo, Lord of the Seven Hells at the hands of the Nephilim, follows your hero as you push to defeat Malthiel, the Angel of Death, and stop him from laying waste to all humanity by use of the Black Soulstone. The new story arc, Act 5, includes new locations such as the Eternal Battlefield, the City of Westmarch, and Pandemonium Fortress. All are well put together and interesting, 
giving the game beautiful new environments in which to lay waste to Malthael's Reapers and the Undying to the Hordes. The new expansion is also a great time to re-roll or switch to a new character. Blizzard has implemented a changed XP system and a new loot distribution system called Loot 2.0. The new system, Streamline XP Gain, allow all characters on an account to share Paragon levels and increase both the quality and frequency of loot drops, meaning that unlike in the past, you should expect to see at least one legendary drop and plenty of high quality rare drops throughout your character's first journey in Sanctuary. Can't decide what class to try out next? How about the newly added Crusader class? A warrior of holy light and unshakable resolve, the Crusader is a close to mid-range tank, capable of taking damage and achieving toughness levels that are nigh unobtainable by other classes. The class's unique items are the Crusader Shield and the one or two-handed flail. Most of the class's skills and abilities revolve around the use of a shield, and the Crusader gets a skill called Heavenly Strength at level nine, giving the Holy Knight the ability to draw on the power of the heavens to wield a two-handed weapon and a shield, opening up a world of powerful equipment selections unavailable to even the mighty Barbarian. Unfortunately, the Crusader can't dual wield and is given that skill purely so that it always has a shield in the other hand. There is literally no reason that any Crusader should be without a board. Other interesting skills available to the class our Steed Charge, which mounts deep. the Crusader on a high-speed horse bathed in holy light to escape their enemies. Also, a trio of laws are available to the Crusader, which are buffs that improve the Knight's damage, toughness, or healing, and can be activated for an even greater temporary boost. One of the things we at Final Boss liked most about Reaper of Souls is that replayability is one of this game's strongest points. Once you face death, a new game mode called Adventure Mode is unlocked for you to enjoy. This new mode lets you travel freely around Sanctuary, visiting dungeons and completing Burn bounties, which are essentially challenges, out in the game world for the ability to open a Nephilim Rift. These rifts are difficult, many-tiered dungeons with elite packs comprised of some of the worst combinations imaginable. However, they also provide a quality and quantity of loot far above what you would expect to receive in normal gameplay. The game also features 14 possible difficulties from normal to torment 10, and the hardcore mode so loved by players from Diablo 3 is still available. All in all, Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls is a worthy expansion to what was already a stellar game and triple A franchise. We here at Final Boss give Reaper of Souls 9 levels of torment out of 10. We need to go down, Sam? I don't know. Oh, Smash, this time Sam is playing against Williams. Yes, I see that. I don't know. Does Sam got it? I don't know. Hello. So Sam does really have to do that. He does have this heavy I don't know if uh Oh no, I missed. Damn. Oh man, this is gonna be a knockout right here, Sam. Oh no. Deuces! We'll see you later. Oh, that's an idea. Okay, so what are we, four to five? Four to five? Yeah. Three minutes in, uh, one minute in the game. Sam's got the radio and he's juggling. Williamson. <laughs> <Stay>. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Sam took himself out of Williamson's uh, respawn invincibility right there. That's kind of yeah. 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 Yeah.
Sudden death! Yes, we are. Oh man! Yes, it wins. We got two heavy hitters on the stage. Oh! Sam defending Viral Boss, yeah. taking out Williamson in sudden death. Yes. I had complete faith in you. We'll see you right here next time on Sudden Death on Final Boss Channel 85. Um, there was there was never any doubt. I'm uh the local Smash Bros. champion here at uh, Final Boss, and um, to be completely honest, I didn't give it my all because Williamson here. I didn't. I mean, he's he's kind of new to the whole scene, and I didn't want to break his heart. Oh, break my heart? No, he he's just joking. He gave it his all. As you can see, it went to sudden death, and uh, he almost lost his championship yeah. title. So it's, it was it was totally orchestrated. Yeah, let's go. That's all for this week on Final Boss. Tune in in two more weeks for our season finale. I can't believe that we're actually already uh, to the point that we only have one more episode left uh, this season. I'd like to thank everybody on uh, the crew of Final Boss, everybody here at MSU TV uh, for helping make our show uh, as great as it is. We had a lot of fun this week uh, with uh, our first sudden death going into sudden death with Sam versus Williamson. And uh, our reviews, Curry did a great job. Robert did a great job. It was really nice of uh, Jessica to come up here and do that interview uh, with me as well about her work. Tune in in two more weeks again for our season finale right here on MSU TV. Thanks for watching.